Hi, Albert here with Mainland Cycle Center. I'm here with Jerry, our service manager. And Jerry, uh, one of the things that we see that happens inevitably is people fill their jet ski with water. They either leave the drain plugs out or they flip it over and they don't get it flipped over right away. There's just lots of scenarios you can do that. Plus, jet skis can leak, right? My dad always says even nuclear submarines leak and have bilge pumps, right? Yes. And that costs millions of dollars. Yeah. So, jet ski can leak. But uh, if you fill your jet ski with water, what's, what do I need to do if I fill my jet ski with water? Well, uh, you know, you need to try to get it out of the water, uh, but as soon as you can, so get the jet ski out of the lake, out of the bay, out of the water. Out of the water. On the uh, trailer. The best way you can. So they can tow you out if you're close. Uh, you know, uh, we were just talking about there's several scenarios. It depends on what situation you wind up in. Uh, but if you can get the ski out of the water, uh, first thing you want to do is pull the spark plugs. So these are the spark plugs are underneath these uh, spark plug caps here? Yes, sir. If you so just, just wiggle them a little out. bit, and they'll pop right out. And, and your spark plugs right down in the hole. Uh, Albert explained earlier. Uh, get you a spark plug tool. So what size spark plug wrench are these? Uh, I believe you said they were five eighths. Five eighths. Uh, so a five eighths socket will loosen these up. You have a spark plug socket that has a little rubber uh, deal in it that'll pull it out. If not, you may need a magnet or a tool to extract because it's quite deep in there. But once I get all the spark plugs out, then what am I going to do? Uh, basically, stand back. Turn the now motor. Now why do I have to stand back? Because it's going to shoot like Old Faithful out of those cylinders. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a geyser. So I just water. need to put my key in, put my lanyard under here, push the green button, crank the engine over, to shoot water out of the cylinder. Yes, sir. Uh, just let it, let it go. Uh, it's about the best way to get it out of the cylinders. So should I just crank and crank and crank? And crank? Well, once it starts clearing up, if it turn, once it turns into a fine mist, you're probably... You're probably Got fine. as much out as I'm going to get out? Yeah, it's not going to push uh, fine particles. So the, what's next after that? Uh, basically you're going to want to clean your spark plug. Uh, you know, spark plugs. Put some anti-seize on them, put them back in. Now when you say clean them, what do you, what do you mean? Well, you're going to want to spray them off, wipe them down real good, uh, just get any wet, you know, So if I have like water. some electrical contact cleaner or some brake clean, I can clean them with that. If I don't have any kind of cleaner, I could clean them with, say, a beach towel. Yeah, anything. Anything to get them dry. Dry. dry them yeah, off. anything to get them dry. Uh, I mean, they're not going to be worth much if they're soaking wet. So, uh, but put the plugs back in. See if you can get it to fire. If you can fire. Now, typically, the first time I put them in, it's probably not going to start. But what it is going to do is, now that I've got compression and the motor's turning, is it'll push all the water that's in the exhaust system. There's normally some water in the exhaust system, right? Yeah. But in this case, it's like really full of water. Yeah, if you water log If you fill yeah. it up with water, it kind of submerges the jet ski. Yeah, and it does happen. We we'll see it. And so, if it doesn't start, what do I do? Uh, you're probably going to want to pull your plugs again and see what they, you know, look pull and see them what out, they say. Pull them out, dry them, put them back in, try to start it. And if it doesn't start, I'm going to have to pull them out and dry them again. Yep. One of the things that uh, I know that I've done over the years is if this is a, a standard spark plug for an Ultra uh, 310, uh, 250, 300. And one of the things I'll do is I'll take a pair of diagonals or uh, uh, side cutters, they call them, and I'll cut this electrode off. And what that does is it makes a wide gap on this spark plug so that the water won't short out between the ground and the electrode. And uh, that, a lot of times, I found really helps get one started really quick. Okay. Now, the problem is I don't want to drive it with those spark plugs in it. won't hurt it to run it a little bit to kind of get the motor dried out, but I don't want to leave those plugs in permanently, so I'm going to need an extra set of spark plugs if I cut these. And so it's a good yeah. idea probably to carry a set of extra spark plugs with you uh, in your jet ski, especially if you've got a big weekend at the lake and company and things like that. And then what do I need to do when I've got the motor restarted and all dried out? Uh, maybe I should check the oil and see if there's yeah. water in the oil. Check your oil, make sure there's not any water in the oil. If you have any water in your oil, uh, you yourself need to change the oil as quick as possible or take it to your you know, nearest service center. Bring it to us if you're in our area, we'd love to help. But do not let that water sit in your oil. Uh, you're going you're gonna to end up with all kinds of problems. Washed out bearings, uh, stuck rings, don't let it sit. And uh, if you do bring your jet ski in for service and this has happened, uh, don't tell us that it just won't start and you know you, you have no clue why you know just be honest with us and so we can help you help you know fix the problem um, we need to get that water out of your oil ASAP uh, and sometimes we'll even actually spray a little fogging oil 
down the uh, down into the cylinder. If you're if you're unable to get it started, see if you can spray some kind of an oil, WD-40, something. If you have your fogging oil that you use to fog your jet ski, spray that into those cylinders and uh, at least get some oil in those cylinders. That oil keeps those cylinders and the pistons and everything from getting oxidized or corroded, see. which can really cause a problem. Uh, this is a great motor. This motor was derived from the, the Ninja motors. Uh, so, you know, the I don't really see them tore up unless people have abused them or, or just neglected them. So. Well, I always like to say that, that usually the biggest problem we see with, with jet skis is, is typically customer inflicted. Uh, yeah. If you'll just uh, avoid some of the, the missteps that you can have, you can really have a lot of fun and, and not have a lot of trouble with your Kawasaki jet ski. They really do quite well. And, uh, but the biggest thing I think is if you, and Jerry, you probably agree that if you get water in your jet ski, it's something that has to be dealt with. You've got water in your in the motor. We're talking about. It's something that has to be dealt with immediately. It's not something yeah. you can wait two weeks and then bring to us. Yeah, don't leave it on your trailer or in your in your boat dock for a week or so. Uh, you need to get that thing out of the water. Uh, and like I said, if you have a way to change your own oil, do it immediately, uh, or bring it to us, or bring it to your your local Kawasaki dealer, and get that taken care of. Don't. I wouldn't even wait a day if you can. Uh, do it the next morning or. Do it that evening if you can get it over there. But the longer that water sits in there, the worse scenario can, can get. So you know, don't hesitate and take care of it. And then when I finally I've got it running, the, I've, a lot of times we see them where they get water in the motor, but actually the oil, the water in the crankcase, the oil in the crankcase is actually still clean. They didn't get water in the crankcase, yeah. depending on how much water they got into the boat. And if there's very little, very very little water. Sometimes if you run the ski for a while, it'll burn that excess off. Uh, but you're probably going to be due for an oil change uh, once this happens. If you I wouldn't take instance. a chance. Wouldn't take a chance. I would go ahead and have it serviced. It's cheap insurance, isn't it? Yes, sir. And this uh, this is a, a really nice motor. You know, this isn't your average jet ski. This is a performance ski. So when you get into one of these, uh, you got to understand you're, you're not buying a Honda. You're you're buying a you know you're buying a Corvette or a Ferrari. Uh, this is, you know, they are a little high maintenance, but the performance is just, the, there's nothing else compares as far as I can see. So I've got it running, I've dodged the bullet, I've got all the water out of my boat, my uh, my engine, uh, my engine oil looks good. Uh, I need, I'm now installing my new spark plugs. The last thing I need to do is install, is apply anti-seize to my spark plugs. One of the problems that we see with the Ultra 310s, 300s, 250s, STX 15Fs, STX 12Fs, any of the four-stroke jet skis is that this spark plug is quite long and it's very, very thin. And so a little bit of corrosion on the spark plug will cause this to snap off when you remove it. And uh, it cost, as we talked about in another video we did, up to $1,200 to uh, repair this and a $5 package of anti-seize will avoid that problem. So and this isn't just a jet spark ski. plugs. This isn't just a jet ski problem though. This is an auto, automotive industry problem too. Uh, yeah, it's happened on uh, some of the automobiles too where the spark plugs have gotten so thin because they're trying to get this long reach to really get that electrode in there and the head has got the cooling jackets to keep it cool so they've gotten really long and they snap off. Yeah, you get some corrosion in there and it won't back out and snap and you're in a hole. Well, I think we've about covered what to do. Biggest thing is you've got to deal with it. Don't let it set. Uh, we hope this video has helped you out. Give us a call if you have any questions. Contact Jerry in our service department. If you're looking at buying a new Kawasaki jet ski, give me a call. Albert Sales. Uh, uh, we're Mainland Cycle Center. We're in Lamarck, Texas. We're about 30 minutes outside of Houston on the Texas Gulf Coast, not far from Galveston. Not at all. Yeah. Hey, Gulf of Mexico. Thanks for watching.